Hey guys, let's talk about 10 cards that have recently gone up in price. They're mostly green this time around, which is actually not by design, but because they are EDH. Now, EDH is the main driver of card prices. We do see some modern spikes, some legacy spikes, but for the most part, cards that go up in price are because they're very good in EDH. So let's talk about what to look at. Parallel Lives is a card that says double or twice. These cards have always been good. These cards will always be good. Just because it's not doubling season, it's not as flexible or as powerful, does not mean it cannot hold a $10 price, which it's getting very close to. Interestingly enough, the foil version is $12.99, which I believe it's an introduction deck. Back when introduction decks were not based on planeswalkers, if that is true, what a great deal, right? If that was the introduction deck. Um, another card that I want to talk about, mainly for artwork reasons, the card is not very good. Slashing Tiger is from Portal Free Kingdoms. It's one of my favorite cards of all time uh, due to the artwork. I think it's a beautiful piece of artwork. It's not a good card, though. It's a for two and two green, it's a free free tiger that when it attacks and is blocked it gets plus two plus two so it's not unblockable but it's also not your opponent is not going to block into it to make it bigger either uh, assuming they don't kill it i don't know like portal free kingdoms a lot of the prices and a lot of there has been many reprints that has that's true and this card could be reprinted but my gut feeling tells me a lot of the artwork is unique and it is worth looking into buying them if you like that type of stuff. I think the art style is unique. The artists themselves, you don't typically see. Uh, I think the artists were, are Asian artists um, are were more heavily Asian than previously. Anyway, let's talk about a limited edition card that is worth far more than the magazine that came in. It came in is worth this has always been valuable uh, it's never not been valuable this has always been a 10 plus dollar card now it is a 25 dollar plus card the magazine that came in i think was like 4.99 it was just like a comic book every comic book store had dozens of this magazine and they couldn't sell it it is quite possible that if you go to a comic book store especially one that also doesn't have magic there are a few big ones in Houston that I can think of where you could buy this for MSRP, which was $4.99 or $5.99 at most, and the card it came with is well worth it. Even at buy list, they're talking about $12 buy list. Uh, if I had to make my own buy list on this, I wouldn't have any problem paying $15 for it because it's such a unique and beautiful card. And you have two Planeswalkers on it. right? You have DAC, and then you have the nightmare ashiok oh it's been a long time and it's overall a good card a great card all right talking about good cards the sun mare the last time we looked at it it was below five dollars now it is about seven and i don't think it is done going up so what do i like about it i like the fact that it is a horse i like the fact the artwork is good i like that it's a mythic and it gives other stuff indestructible. It's a strong card. It just costs too much, right? Like if it was a 4-4 four, four and it cost 2 and 2 white, it would be pretty good. It would be modern good. If it was a 1 double white and it was a 1-1, one, one, then it would be incredibly amazing in modern. But costing 5 kind of limits it. In the, in the eternal formats, I almost said... It, eternalize right well uh in the eternal formats like modern a turn five drop is not typical like it's just not going to work a turn five drop in well i mean maybe but you're when you're hitting turn five in this mono white horse life gain deck you are facing opponents that are hitting a drowsy uh, the same turn or the next turn over Next, we will take a look at what I have found in bulk. So a lot of times you find this in bulk because it looks like bulk. 
It looks like bulk. And I have found lots of them in many different stores because it is um, Mary's Guile, one green enchantment during your upkeep. You may look at the top three cards of your library and put them back in any the order. It is a rare, but it is from Tempest. And many stores that do not understand or do not even... It just seems like a bulk card. It's one that you can probably still find today in many stores, and it's $20. Tempest kind of, that little Tempest symbol kind of looks like it's uh, a common, right? And it kind of feels like a common too. Like you wouldn't imagine this is a rare, but it is, and it's very good. And I think it's seeing more play in the Miracles deck after top has been banned. Next, Oracle is a great card from Zendikar. Uh, it has very humble origins of being bulk, and now it is twenty-two dollars. Good cards don't get good cards survive the test of time, and this is one of them. Like barring the reprint, the new reprints, it is a good card. It doubles your mana. Or sorry, it doesn't double. I'm thinking of a different one. You may play an additional land, so it allows you to have exploration. And it is very similar to the Crufix one, the little horse guy. Overall, a fantastic card, something that I think will only get more valuable given more time. And it's, it's stuff that I like, right? These cards are things that I would buy and buy, buy, and then one day they are $22 and you're sitting on 20 of them. And you're like, okay, good. But even if they were not $22, I would be okay with having multiple copies of it because the artwork is so fantastic. And that's why when I say buy artwork, I mean that. Now, one of the interesting things to get you ready for unstable, uh, unhinged, the lands are unhinged have been going up steadily, slowly but steadily, and it's $11. So a lot of people sold out of these because they expected that they would be less valuable given the fact that we have so many full art lands. But the unhinged lands are by John Avon. So imagine every pack you're getting $10. Every pack you pay $3 because that's what booster packs cost at the time. You open the pack and great, it's a $10 card. Oh, great, another $10 card. Oh, another $10 card. Well, is that going to come with unstable? We will see. But if unstable is printed in limited quantities or not like mass printed then yes the land in every pack has a land i believe um i'm pretty sure that was true for unglued and unhinged it's a great value long term wise now would that be true for unstable time will tell i'm not sure uh, the same can be said with unglued the unglued lands are less desirable because there's more border space right there's less uh there's more brown at one point in time, the unglued was more desirable and because it was older and we didn't have as many full art lands, but the unglued were hit harder by the full art lands than the unhinged. So in terms of value, in terms of what to look for in unstable, look to see that if they're more like unhinged than unglued, but at the same time, if you just, no matter what you got in your pack, as long as you got the land, you would be, you'd be good. You'd be good to go. And that's how they sold it. A lot of people are forgetting like how it was sold. It wasn't sold that you would get your value from the cards. That's not going to be possible because the cards are not playable. But it was sold that you would get the one land that was playable. And everyone had unglued, unhinged lands because they were, again, this was before full art lands became mass produced. This was before even... Um, original Zendikar. Okay, so let's talk about this card. <laughs> this was the absolute definition of bulk when it came out. It was a win condition that most people could not do. It was a win condition that was very, very difficult to achieve. And it wasn't something that, uh, it wasn't something that I would say made a lot of sense at the time for you to invest in. But as time has told, as time has gone on, Different win conditions have been highlighted 
And this particular one is very interesting because all you need is 100 counters. And if you have things that can double counters, you get there a lot faster. It costs one green. You cannot hit it. It has shroud. That's what it means. What's hexproof means no one can hit it. So shroud, I think, means only you can hit it. But your opponents cannot hit it, which is relevant. In EDH, you have a little bit more life. You have a little bit more time. You will be a hard target, and you are setting a clock for yourself, which is fine because sometimes, honestly, sometimes games go too long anyway. And lastly, the Nico Boles. This one has spiked from 50 to 75, and I don't see it really going down anytime. This is the best version of Nico Boles. The Legend version is nice. I'm not going to say it's not nice, but Nico Boles is a character. He is a arc villain. And as his lore gets more and more popular, his price will get more and more popular. So or his price will keep going up. Anyway, these are 10 cards. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. Bye, guys. Le oh, also leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.